Welcome to Advanced Concepts Oxygenation or Gas Exchange Unit. I'm going to spend a little time talking about anatomy and physiology of the respiratory tract. Hopefully this is information that is repetitive to you. However, if it's not, it is information that is necessary for your um, exam taking capabilities. It's going to be useful for you to understand content. So when we talk about pathophysiology, we need to think about structure and function of the pulmonary system. You have been educated that the lungs um, contain three lobes on the right, two lobes on the left. We have airways, we have our chest wall, pulmonary circulation. We need to think about um, what the pulmonary system does. So when you think about the pulmonary system, it's responsible for ventilation and diffusion. Those are going to be terms that you are going to be responsible for knowing uh, coming into class and being prepared for the exam. The cardiovascular system is the major component of perfusion or the movement of blood into and out of the capillary beds. But those three uh, terms are going to be the main purposes uh, when we talk about gas exchange. The conducting airways are going to be the airways that allow air into and out of the gas exchange structures of the lungs. So when you think about that, you need to think about the nasopharynx, oropharynx, and related structures. The upper airway is lined with ciliated mucosa that warms and humidifies our inspired air and removes foreign particles from it. We also have the larynx then that connects the upper and lower airways. The trachea then is supported by U-shaped cartilage and connects the larynx to the bronchi um, or the conducting airways of the lungs. When you think about the larynx and the cartilage around there and the trachea, when you get into critical care, you will be talking about tracheostomies and ventilation or ventilators, those types of things. So it's important that you understand the anatomy uh, behind the respiratory tract. Um, then we have the two main bronchi that branch down uh, from the trachea and then the right and left main bronchi enter the lungs at the hilia. When you think about the bronchial walls, uh, each bronchial wall has three layers, the epithelial lining, the smooth muscle layer, and then the connective tissue layer. And those are going to be important when we start talking about disease processes. So when we start talking about asthma and what happens um, also with COPD, CHF, emphysema, um, cystic fibrosis, those types of things. The epithelial cells um, contain single exo, single cell exocrine glands. Um, they're mucus secreting and so with the mucus secretion and the cilia that does help um, to keep pathogens and microorganisms out of our respiratory or lung tract. And then when we think about gas exchange, uh, we need to consider the lower parts of the respiratory tract when we are considering that. So when we start talking about the um, alveoli, those are going to be the primary gas exchange units of the lung. Um, it's going to be where oxygen enters the blood and carbon dioxide is removed. When we talk about that, um, it's going to be important to know how they work um, adequately because then you're going to be able to apply that knowledge of normal pathophysiology, anatomy, and physiology to the abnormal concepts that we would spend time talking about in class. Um, the lungs actually contain about 25 million alveoli at birth and then 300 million by adulthood. So when you're thinking about across the lifespan and how things change, it's really important to um, remember that part. Um, there are two types of epithelial cells that are in the alveoli. Um, type 1 provide the structure and then type 2 secrete surfactant. And so surfactant is really important to our lungs because it is a lipoprotein that coats the inner surface of the alveoli and lower alveolar surface tension and and expiration which prevents the lungs from collapsing and so when we start talking about um, the neonatal period and premature babies they don't have that surfactant so they end up um, having those alveolar ducts and alveoli kind of collapse on themselves so that is important with that with pulmonary and bronchial circulation uh, pulmonary circulation facilitates gas exchange it delivers nutrients to lung tissues and acts as a reservoir for the left ventricle um, it also serves as a filtering system that removes clots, air, and other debris from circulation. 
Um, pulmonary circulation has a lower pressure and resistance than systemic circulation. So we see increased perfusion when the right ventricle when we have right ventricular cardiac output increasing. Um, so increased delivery of blood to the lungs doesn't normally mean that there'll be increased pulmonary artery pressure uh, because there are lower pressures um, inside pulmonary circulation. Um, the pulmonary artery divides as it enters the lungs at the hilia and it contain and then it continues to branch from there into every bronchus and bronchial bronchioli having um, an accompanying artery or arterial pulmonary capillaries surround the alveoli uh, where gas exchange occurs and any disorder that thickens this area um, or this very thin membrane will end up impairing gas exchange and so that's why it's important to know the normal so you can apply that abnormal. Um, each pulmonary vein drains several pulmonary capillaries and uh, pulmonary veins are dispersed throughout the lungs and then leave the lung and enter into the left atrium. So you need to also add that perfusion component and recall normal perfusion and how uh, blood travels through the heart. We also need to consider the chest wall and pleura, and those are going to be important for protecting the lungs from injury. They help perform the musculature work of breathing. Just when you refer to this slide, um, be thinking about um, these quick check questions. Are you able to explain the major components of the pulmonary system? What are conducting airways? And then describe the alveoli. So reflecting a little bit back on pulmonary and bronchial circulation, it is important to remember that the alveoli is where gas exchange takes place and we need to have healthy functioning alveoli in order to have adequate oxygenation. Along the lines of the chest wall um, that I mentioned before, we do need to consider the pleura. And the pleural space is between the two linings um, of the lung. And what that does, the pleural space is normally filled with pleural fluid that helps lubricate and allow um, these two membranes to slide over each other. So a term that you might hear um, or a condition that you might hear talked about is pleurisy or patients having pleuritic chest pain and those types of things. And that's just because that um, there's maybe some inflammation in that area um, or we have a punctured lung, something like that. So we do uh, need to consider that. When we think about function of the pulmonary system, and obviously the function is going to be that then um, it ventilates the alveoli. It is the mechanical movement of gas or air into and out of the lungs. It diffuses gas into and out of the blood and perfuses the lungs so organs and body tissues can receive blood that is rich in oxygen and low in carbon dioxide. You understand that breathing is usually involuntary and ventilatory rate and volume are adjusted automatically by the nervous system to maintain normal gas exchange. And with that said, the lung is innerviated by the autonomic nervous system and fibers of the symp sympath sympathetic nervous system in the lung branch from the upper thoracic and cervical ganglia of the spinal cord. And then fibers of the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system travel in the vagus nerve to the lungs. So patterns of breathing can be influenced by emotions, pain, disease, processes, anxiety. So really, it's... it's it, our body just does it because we thrive to stay in a normal pH level. We strive to stay adequately oxygenated. When you think about the chemoreceptors, um, there are three types of lung receptors um, that send impulses from the lungs to the dorsal respiratory group. And so the irritant receptors or C fibers are found in the epithelium of all conducting airways. And those are going to be sensitive to noxious, noxious aerosols or gases, particulate matter, um, which cause them to initiate cough reflexes. Um, when they're stimulated, irritant receptors also cause bronchoconstriction and increase ventilatory rate. We then have stretch receptors that are located in the smooth muscles of the airway and are sensitive to increase, increases in the size or volume of the lungs. Uh, they decrease ventilatory rate and volume when they're stimulated. 
Uh, the reflex is active in newborns and assists with ventilations, and in adults, it's active only at high tidal volume, so when you're exercising, and it helps uh, protect against excess lung inflation. And then lastly, the J receptors are located near the capillaries in the alveolar septa, and they're sensitive to increased pulmonary, pulmonary capillary pressure, um, which simulates them to initiate rapid, shallow breathing. Um, and it causes us to be hypotensive and maybe bradycardic. So when you think about the chemoreceptors, they're responsible for monitoring the pH, the PaCO2, and the PaO2 of arterial blood. And they're very sensitive to small changes in pH, and typically we can maintain a normal PCO2 um, in many different conditions. But um, when you think about long-term effects of COPD, those receptors are then going to become um, insensitive to small changes, and then those patients are going to be the ones that um, are consistently hypoxemic or acidotic and um, having too much carbon dioxide. Just a couple of slides left. Um, the mechanics of breathing, um, you need to think about the major um, and accessory muscles of inspiration and expiration, the elastic properties of lungs and the chest wall, and then resistance to airflow through conducting airways. So your major accessory muscles are going to be your diaphragm, external intercostal muscles, scalenous muscles, sternocleidal mastoid, pectoris muscles, those types of things. Um, with a VLR surface tension, um, the surface surfactant is going to be the biggest player in that, um, and surfactant molecules are going to be what is responsible for preventing the AVLI from collapsing back on themselves. The elastic properties of the lungs then are going to permit expansion during inspiration and return to resting volume during expiration. Um, normal elastic re recoil permits passive expiration, so we just do it without noticing it, as well as it may be... Um, insufficient during labored breathing when we have to start using our accessory muscles. So the accessory muscles are going to be utilized then if we um, have to look towards compromises um, or decreasing of that elastic recoil such as with emphysema um, or any blocking conducting airway disorder. Um, airway resistance is typically low um, and because of the large um, cross-sectional surface area um, that creates airway resistance to be quite low and it will increase when the diameter of the airway is narrow so if we have um, instances of asthma or where edema of the bronchial mucosa occurs with obstruction um, such as with COPD and um, inflammatory processes so being aware of what normal what the normal breathing mechanics are and then what you're going to be thinking about when you think about the abnormal side and then lastly, gas transport is just the delivery of oxygen to the cells and removal of carbon dioxide. Um, it contains four steps, so you have to think about ventilation of the lungs, diffusion of oxygen from the AVLI into capillary blood, the perfusion of systemic capillaries with oxygenated blood, and then diffusion of oxygen from systemic capillaries to the cells. And if any of those steps are impaired, gas exchange at a cellular level, cellular level will be compromised. So when you're looking at this slide, the things that you do need to take away um, are going to be your pH, your um, PCO2, PO2 levels. Um, we'll continue to talk about acid-base balance as well as uh, respiratory acidosis and alkalosis when we meet. Um, if you have any questions about anatomy and physiology of the respiratory tract, please bring those into class. Um, and if you have any other suggestions on improvement, please let me know.